Hey church, for this month's book recommendation, I'm actually gonna be doing a collection of books uh, looking at what I think are some of the best children's books. Now this video is gonna be a bit longer since I'm gonna be going over several books. So if you want the short of it, let me cut to the chase in terms of the very best children's books in my opinion. First of all, my absolute favorite children's Bible is David Helm's uh, The Big Picture Story Bible. I also really like Kevin DeYoung's The Biggest Story uh, that goes over the storyline of scripture as well. Of course, there are translations intended for children that are of the actual Bible. Uh, I would recommend the International Children's Bible, the ICB, or the NIVs, um, the NIRV, so NIV Reader's Edition. I believe these are at like a third or fourth grade reading level. In terms of family worship, I recommend picking up a good hymnal like the Trinity Hymnal, going through the New City Catechism with your children or another good catechism. And then another book that I really like is uh, Marty Makowski's uh, The Ology. This is like a theology book, but for kids. Okay, so that's the short version. Now the longer version with a lot more books and a lot more caveats. First of all, this video series is not covering every book for adolescents, but I'm specifically targeting books related to what we might call like lower elementary. Also, I'm not doing fictional books like the Chronicles of Narnia, things like that, but I'm thinking specifically of catechetical books or books that you would use in family devotions or, or things where you're teaching your children the fundamental elements of the faith. Also, I obviously haven't read every children's book out there, so this is just based on the ones I have read. Nonetheless, I did read quite a bit of books. Um, I own quite a bit of books myself, children's books for my own children, as well as I asked people from our church to loan me copies of books that they have. Different publishers also graciously sent me several copies of their books, so I was able to survey quite a bit. If by chance there's a book that you really like and I don't include it in this list, it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't like the book. Uh, maybe I read it and I just decided not to include it because I didn't want the list to get too large. Or there's also the chance that I just haven't read it. Finally, there's bound to be many other children's books published in the future that are also really good. So just keep that in mind when you're watching this, uh, the date of when I'm actually recording this. All right, so with all that said, let's start off with children's Bibles. As I said, my absolute favorite is David Helm's The Big Picture Story Bible. Uh, this one is really good for younger children as well, um, because as you'll see, with little kids, if you have little kids, you know they get impatient when you're reading books that have a lot of words on them. The, these pages, they don't have a whole lot of text, so it's really good for little kids as well. You're gonna be moving through the pages quickly. But the thing that I really like about this one is that it, it really takes the theme of God's kingdom, of God's people in his place, experiencing his uh, blessing with his presence under his rule, and, and shows how that is interwoven across the scriptures. So it really does a great biblical theology at a really young level, showing how the covenant promises trace across scripture and really shows the unity of scripture. And this is good for adults then too, uh, helping you grasp the unity of scripture uh, in terms of God's covenant plan of redemption. Kevin DeYoung's book, uh, The Biggest Story, uh, traces the theme particularly of the promise of a seed who will crush the head of the serpent. It really uses that theme to trace the storyline of scripture, but it does an amazing job. I really like this one as well. This one uh, is a little bit more wordy, a little bit more words on, a, on the pages, and so a little bit harder for the younger kids, but when they get into the elementary ages, this one is really good. So now for some honorable mentions in the category of children's Bibles. Kevin DeYoung's book that I just mentioned was so popular uh, that they, the publisher had him produce a much larger uh, expansion of that book, and this is pretty solid as well. You lose a little bit of the unity that this book conveys, but this one has a lot more of the Bible's stories contained in it. Similarly, you have Marty Makowski's uh, The Gospel Story Bible. This is actually the one that our that our children's curriculum at Crossway is based on um, and that the teachers will use. And this just does a really good job presenting a lot of different, uh, uh, going through really most of the major, most all of the major stories in scripture. It is particularly wordy. Um, it's not going to have a lot of pictures compared to others, um, but it just does a really good job in terms of the content. A really popular one that 
tends to give a little bit more of an artistic license to some of the stories and how they're told, um, but does so in creative ways, is the Jesus Storybook Bible. Um, a little bit more wordy, but not incredibly so. So I found that it was difficult for um, our, our when our kids were really young to have the attention span for this one, but as soon as they get a little bit older, this can be a good one as well. And then I'll throw in uh, the Beginner's Gospel Story Bible. The, the reason I liked this one is uh, it's, it's not super wordy, um, and it's just really simple. Um, so not as simple as David Helms. That one is really simple and super well done. Um, this one's a little bit more comprehensive in terms of the amount of stories covered, but it does so in a way that would be maybe um, a little bit more accessible even for a younger child. All right, I mentioned these ones before, but in terms of actual Bibles written in uh, child translations, I recommend the NIRV and the ICB. As I've read these, I bought one of these for uh, two, the two older of my children and just was comparing the two. They're very comparable. It's hard to really put one over the other. Um, the ICB, International Tr Children's Bible, is available, at least it's, it's, they're developing it in the Dwell app, the audio Bible app, so you can have your kids listen to this translation for at least some of the books that are out yet. Um, but really what these do is they're faithful translations that are going to try to break down any jargon or terminology lingo that might be a little bit more um, difficult for a child to understand. Um, and also uh, take any sentences that are particularly long and just break them up into smaller sections so it's easier for reading comprehension. So I would encourage you to pick these up as well. Don't just do the children's Bible, so to say, but actually just start reading the actual Bible to your children uh, as well. And then for family worship together or family devotions, um, I we have uh, two videos I've already done on this hymnal as well as the New City Catechism, but I'm just gonna mention those here as well. Also on the topic of family worship, um, I did a podcast with Donald Whitney on his book by that title. So be sure to check that podcast out as well. If you're looking for a little bit of help or maybe encouragement when it comes to spending time in God's word as a family, then pick up a copy of that book as well, Family Worship by Donald Whitney. It's a really excellent primer and guide to the topic of family worship. All right, now for some books that maybe you wouldn't necessarily use in family worship, but are more topical in nature. One series that I really enjoyed um, is the Tales That Tell the Truth series. Um, there's a, They have a bunch of books, and I'm sure they'll produce more even after I put this video out. But the ones that I would want to mention as I, I really liked, I, I, I did like all of them, but the ones that I really liked was The Garden, The Curtain, and The Cross, really doing an overview of the Bible storyline from the theme of God's presence, the tabernacle, the temple, God's presence in the Garden of Eden. Really good. Really liked this one. Um, this one by uh, Trilla Newbell, God's Very Good Idea. Uh, this tells the storyline of scripture, but from the theme of God bringing, redeeming a people for himself from all tribes, nations, tongues, and ethnicities. So a little bit of focus on ethnic unity in the gospel, but really well done. One of the most well done children's books I've ever read. And then there's another really good one from this series called Anytime, Any Place. Any prayer just helps kids think through the fact that they can go to God in prayer at any time. I also really enjoyed the series God Made. Each of these books starts with God Made and then it addresses a particular topic. You have Shai Lin, uh, God Made You or Me and You, celebrating God's design for ethnic diversity. So helping kids understand um, ethnic diversity from a Christian perspective. Uh, God Made Boys and Girls by Marty Mikowski again. This one is helping children understand the gift of gender. So God's uh, design difference between boys and girls. Um, God Made All of Me, uh, a book to help children protect their bodies. So really a book that will help children understand their own bodies as well as provide them uh, age appropriate instruction that will help guard them um, against abuse. And then God Made Me Unique, helping children see value in every person. This one is by Joni Erickson Tata, um, who herself um, suffers from paralysis and is wheelchair bound. And uh, so she writes about um, just seeing God's value in all sorts of people, including those with disabilities. There's the What Every Child Should Know series. Um, this one by Nancy Guthrie is What Every Child Should Know About Prayer. So really going over a pretty in-depth actual look at prayer in scripture. 
And then I like this one as well. Um, everyone a child should know. So kind of like a little church history for your kids. Um, and it goes through basically every, every uh, section, every chapter, if you will, um, is like a different figure from church history. So Augustine, Corey Ten Boone, John Calvin, uh, Adoniram Judson, George Mueller, etc. The late R.C. Sproul um, has a series of books as well that he's written. Two of the better ones, in my opinion, are The Priest with Dirty Clothes and The Prince's Poison Cup. Really stories written for children uh, that are presenting the truths of the gospel. And then there's a series of books by biblical counselor uh, Ed Welch. And uh, this one I have here, which is representative of some of the others, is Buster's Ears Trip Him Up. And I really enjoyed uh, this book and some of the others from this series. Really a way of applying um, biblical truth in very practical ways for ki kids. So it's kind of what you'd expect of a biblical counselor writing a Christian book. But these are really practical, helping kids apply the gospel and apply biblical truth to their lives, even as children. I mentioned uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible by Sally Lloyd-Jones um, under children's Bibles. Well, the same author has produced text that's actually taken from this book. So if you already own this book, you already own the text of these two books I'm about to mention. But they take what is text on one page and they expand it into an entire book. So this one goes through Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Um, and this one goes through uh, it's called Love, to go in, going through the Lord's Prayer. And so if you already own the Jesus Storybook Bible, you already own the text. But these are kind of fun because they just, they, they, they break down each line into its own page and just force you, with each having their own picture, kind of force you to go through it slowly. And so these are nice as well. Lexham Press is currently uh, developing a series called the Fat Cat Series. A cat is short for catechism. And I guess the idea is wanting... Uh, the catechism to be rich um, in the lives of children, so fat cat. Anyways, and so the two that I would want to mention here are uh, one that goes through the Apostles' Creed and another that goes through the Lord's Prayer. Wolfbane Books is uh, developing a series of books um, that have the title The Story Of, and so you have one here on the story of God our King, and then another one the story of God with us. And these really focus on telling the overarching storyline of scripture here from the vantage point of God's presence, uh, the temple, his dwelling among us, the tabernacle, and this one from the theme of his kingship. The, uh, the drawings in these books are incredibly well done. So in terms of just the, uh, the visuals of these books, um, just really, really well done. All right, now I'll mention some final kind of miscellaneous ones. So here we have the classic uh, Little Pilgrim's Progress by Helen Taylor. You can probably tell this is adapted from John Bunyan's classic novel and allegory, uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Here it's adapted so that it's, uh, you know, understandable to children and the characters are presented as little animals. And so you have Christian, who's a little bunny. And then there's actually a second story of Christiana, who's a, a little girl bunny. Um, and so it's, uh, there are, it's been, it's been re-illustrated if I understand correctly. And so you do have pictures occasionally. Uh, it is quite a bit of text though. Um, so it is, uh, it's a pretty developed story. Andy Nacelli, who has actually done quite a bit of academic work in the area of conscience, has put out a children's book on the subject of conscience, teaching children uh, what their conscience is and how they should relate to it. Nancy Guthrie has done a little book on typology, uh, using this kind of image of shadow from scripture that we get in scripture to teach children uh, about how we have these pictures in the Old Testament that are looking forward to Jesus. And then this book by Melissa Kruger, uh, His Grace is Enough, um, it, it really teaches it's a really well done book. I really like this one. Uh, uh, teaching children about the nature of God's grace, particularly uh, his grace to forgive us when we do wrong, when we disobey our parents and when we sin. All right, so that completes the list of books. Again, if you're going for the very top ones, I recommend The Big Picture Story Bible by David Helm, The Biggest Story by Kevin DeYoung, The Ology by Marty Makowski, um, picking up an actual Bible and reading it to your children in either translation, the ICB or the NIRV, and then also getting a hymnal and going through a catechism like the New City Catechism with your children.